the worldwide leader in sports. This is the Hot List on ESPN News. All right, a lot of stories to talk about in the world of tennis uh, off an exciting Wimbledon. Again, Venus Williams, we just heard from her from uh, Moscow getting ready for Fed Cup with the, uh, the epic win over Lindsay Davenport. And uh, where does Roger Federer rank among the all-time greats? Uh, not too early to talk about that sort of thing. Let's bring in a man who knows about tennis uh, as well as anyone. Steve Bellamy, founder of the Tennis Channel, joins us right now on the Hot List. Steve, it's Brian Kenny. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. What did you think of Venus Williams and her performance in Wimbledon, Steve? I, I thought she was just spectacular. Um, you know, the story was great, uh, she was great, you watched her progress every single match, she just got a little better, a little better, and then met a Lindsay Davenport who was nearly flawless and still managed to, to eke out the win, so it was, it was great for her. You know, in 2000 or 2001, though, where did you think Venus Williams would be right now? I mean, how many championships, how, how dominant did you think she would be at that point? I, I have always been a huge believer in Venus Williams, and Serena for that matter. Um, you know, she was still getting to the finals every year back then. Right. Uh, but, you know, that both of the sisters were plagued by injuries, and uh, I think they were so dominant for such a long time that the rest of the girls were just focusing on beating them. So it was really challenging for the girls, but they're back. Where do you, uh, I mean, how do you figure Lindsay Davenport exactly with, you know, number one player in the world, doesn't win these major championships, but gets to the finals all of the time. Talked about retiring last year. How do you evaluate her, uh, her career right now? Well, I, I think if, looking at it from uh, you know, 40,000 feet, it seemed to me when she said, you know, I might be done, all the pressure went away. And she really started swinging for the trees. I mean, she's striking the ball as clean as anyone has ever struck it in the history of the game. And keep in mind, she was one point away from winning Wimbledon. So she's right there. You know, it's just uh, you know, a point here, a point there that decides that. Where do you think that final will rank all time? I do think that is the greatest Wimbledon ever. I mean, you had the stories, you had the drama, certainly the performances were magnificent. Uh, it was the longest one in the history of, of Wimbledon. Uh, I, I know it was certainly hard to get tickets there, that's for sure. What do you think of Maria Sharapova after, uh, after her going out in the semis? Um, I mean, I'm not losing a lot of, uh, or shedding a lot of tears for her. She's, uh, she is doing so well in tennis. Obviously, her, her talent is speaking for itself. You know, there's no one who can ding her on, you know, does she have the skills to make it? And in terms of the other part of her, you know, commercial value, you know, her beauty is just, it's a joke. I think she'd have to get a really crappy, crappy haircut to ever knock that part of the equation out. What about Serena Williams? Now, Sharapova keeps uh, progressing uh, and Arden gets healthy again. Venus is back up on top. Can Serena dominate with this depth uh, of talent? Yeah, we can't forget that Serena Williams was probably one of the most dominant female athletes in the history of sports. I think the question is, you know, does she want to? And if she does, you know, I, I guarantee you she'll be back in the hunt in no time. So you, but do you think she can dominate the way she, way she did? Unequivocally. Okay. Men's side, what do you think of Roger Federer? Again, uh, the thoughts already, where, where does he rank all time? Is that way too soon? Or is he in that echelon now where, yeah, you can put him up against the all-time greats? Well, on a relative basis, I don't think he's, you know, he hasn't risen to the peat level just because he hasn't had the opportunities. But on an absolute basis, I think he is unequivocally the greatest player to ever hold a racket. For that matter, I think he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, athletes of all time. If you, if you break down the, uh, the components of athleticism, speed, agility, ball striking, hitting, throwing, this guy is, is the top of it all. all I mean, right. There's no but, chink. So you're saying he's the, the greatest tennis player of all time. Not that he has the greatest resume, he doesn't yet, but he's, you think he's the greatest of all time? On an absolute basis, I don't think anyone has risen to that level. I would argue that the top ten players today are evolving so fast that you know, you're seeing you know, the majority of the best players in the history of the game playing in the top ten today. So you think Federer is better or more dominant than Bjorn Borg at his peak? Well, dominant would be on a relative basis. If you stick the two guys on a court, you know, Borg at his prime, Federer at his prime, I say Federer wins ten times in a row. Uh, on a relative basis, obviously, you know, the competition was a lot uh, easier back then and, you know, Borg was way more dominant. Uh, how, do you think it's really that much better now? Tennis has gotten I, that much better? I, I, you know, tennis, uh, it suffers because it's an endless summer. You know, it's mano a mano, it's, it's 11 months a year, the players barely get a break. 
but the positive is it just keeps raising the bar higher and higher and higher. I, I challenge anyone to go sit at a pro tennis match and watch what happens there. It is just, it's spectacular athletics. Uh, but yet, you know, it's hard to rate. You know, even in the NBA, you might look back and you, you look back at some of the old teams that you hold in such high regard and you think, wow, they're, they're a little loose with the ball back then, but the flow is better. But watching tennis, it's hard to really rate it because of the equipment. I mean, guys can just smash the ball much harder. What are your thoughts on that? I, I would, you know, that's what is always said, and I would say that, that the players have evolved way more than the equipment has. If you look at, you know, players even 10 years ago, they're hitting forehands with both feet on the ground. You watch, you know, a great high school player today, and their feet are literally flying 6, 8, 12 inches off the ground on every ball strike. And we have evolved as a player more than, a, than the equipment has. Uh, Andy Roddick, does he challenge Federer, or is he always, always going to be number two behind Federer as long as Federer stays where he is? Well, I mean, one thing that accrues to Andy's benefit is he can really isolate his guns on Federer. How do I beat this guy? Whereas Federer is probably, you know, he's won nine times out of ten now. He is probably not going to say, you know, okay, back to the drawing board. How do I beat Roddick? Uh, you got two guys, now Bandian, who's got a winning record against Federer, and Rafael Nadal, who's got a winning record against Federer. And uh, I, you know, I bet you Andy goes back to their books and says, how, how do these guys do it? And it seems to me it's you don't beat Federer with a big serve. You don't beat him with a first strike offense. You beat him by staying in the point a long, long time. And I think that's what Andy's got to do. All right, Steve. Well, we ran out of time. Didn't have a chance to go over your, your, your views on TV production. I thought it was pretty interesting stuff. But anyway, you have the tennis channel. You have time to do it over there. Thank you, Steve. Good talking to you. Thanks for having me. All right, Steve Bellamy, again, uh, founder of the Tennis Channel. When we come back...